Hi, James Wiffen for CG Tuts, and today we're talking about working linearly inside of Maya. This is the gamma curve of a standard sRGB monitor. For this reason, when we open a linear image in a program that doesn't account for this gamma curve, the image will often appear very dark. But the reason sRGB images look correct is because they have an sRGB gamma correction applied to them under the hood or behind the scenes. The gamma correction counteracts the gamma curve of the monitor to display it correctly. So what's wrong with working in sRGB color space in comparison to working linearly? If we have a look at this color space comparison chart, it's pretty easy to see uh, where we go wrong with this sRGB gamma curve. If we have a look down the bottom, zero on our sRGB is equivalent to zero on our linear, and one is equivalent to one in linear. But 0.5, in sRGB is only around 0.2 in linear space, and that alone gives us a lot of problems. Here I have a simple Maya scene, just some basic geometry with two spotlights, and I'm just going to turn on lights just to show you. They overlap in the center, and what I've done is exported this image twice, once working in linear color space, and once working in sRGB. Let's examine these images inside of After Effects. So in the sRGB image, we have 0.5 intensity mixing with 0.5 intensity to form one. That behaves as we expect. The linear image has 0.5 intensity plus 0.5 intensity, but combines to 0.68. So on first glance, it appears that the sRGB image is correct. That's actually false. The only reason this appears correct is because we're working in sRGB color space. If we were to look at our color space comparison chart, we see that of the sRGB image, we had a light that was 0.5 intensity combined with a light 0.5 intensity. Now let's note that 0.5 intensity in sRGB color space is only 0.2 intensity in linear color space. But the way that this gamma curve works is that 100% intensity in sRGB also equals 100% linearly. So when we're adding 0.5 and 0.5 to equal one in sRGB, in linear space, we're actually adding 0.2 plus 0.2 to equal one. And this is where Master Zap saying two plus two doesn't equal 10 comes from. The problem with sRGB gamma curve is that it's 100% intensity is actually five times as bright as its 0.5 intensity. Whereas with linear gamma, one intensity is only twice as bright as 0.5 intensity, which makes sense and is exactly how light behaves in the real world. So what do we need to do in order to have a linear workflow inside of Maya? It's very simple yet somewhat confusing. Maya will do the maths linearly, however we have to provide it linear textures and linear colors. When we give Maya an 8-bit image, it has a gamma of 2.2. So we need to apply a gamma correction of 0.4545 recurring to cancel out the gamma of 2.2 and make the gamma 1.0. Alternatively, when working inside of Maya in linear color space, we can tell Maya that yes, this is indeed an 8-bit image and it will compensate for that on its own. But more on that later. Also, when you want to pick a color for a certain material in Maya, how is it going to display that color to you since you're using an sRGB monitor? It has to gamma correct the colors. So when we pick a color in Maya, if we want to work linearly, we also have to apply the gamma correction of 0.4545 to those colors. So knowing when and what to gamma correct is the key to setting up a successful linear workflow inside of Maya. Confusion often stems from the fact that there are so many ways to do gamma correction in Maya. So let's look at what's arguably the easiest way to set up a linear workflow inside of Maya. Firstly, let's examine the scene. We have a cube here with some dirt textures and some grass textures. And then we have three colored Lamberts in here. Now I'm just gonna turn on the lights for a second. You can see that the lights are coming from this area light, which has quadratic decay, which is, as you all know, how light behaves in the real world. And um, because I have lights turned on, this is how Maya estimates the lighting will look when doing a render. So let's actually do a render right now. This is the render we get back. 
So let's uh, just compare what the actual render looks like as to how my estimated the lighting would look like. And it's pretty obvious that the pink sphere in the render is completely blown out, whilst the things at the back are quite dark. So why is this happening? We know that our highlights are five times brighter than our midtones, and that's why we're getting these extremely blown out areas while the rest of the scene is quite dim. So let's go about setting up our easy to set up linear workflow. And to do that, firstly, we come into the render settings and enable color management. So first of all, default input profile. It's currently set to sRGB. What we want to do is tell Maya that we'll provide all the textures and colors in linear. Now for the default output profile, we're currently making tweaks and we're rendering it and viewing it inside of Maya. And to display that correctly, we need it to be set to sRGB because we're on an sRGB monitor. If this was set to linear, well then the image would be correct. However, it would look incorrect in the render view, and that's a problem. So we need it to be set to sRGB so that our renders appear correct. Then when we want to render out our 32-bit EXRs to a compositing application to composite in linear color space, that's when we set it to linear sRGB. But because we're still making tweaks and viewing it in the render view, I want it set to sRGB. So we've set up our color management. Let's take a test render. This is what we get. The lighting is a lot better than our first image. However, everything appears washed out. And that's because we told Maya that we'd be supplying it with linear textures and linear colors. However, we actually didn't. These colors and textures are all sRGB. So we better go and fix those up. So I'll just save this image and let's start in the hypershade. I'm going to go to the textures and do those first. Click on the grass texture and note that the color profile is set to use default input profile, which is currently linear. But this image is sRGB, so let's tell Maya that this is an sRGB image and same for the dirt. And that's all there is for the textures. Now for the colors. So we picked this color in sRGB color space. How do we tell Maya that we want to make this color linear? Unfortunately, there's not an option box that we can just tick. What we have to do is apply a gamma correction of 0.4545, which is the inverse of the sRGB gamma correction 2.2. And that will even it out to be a linear color. So let's click on the checkerboard and go up to Maya and type in gamma. And we can see we have the gamma correct node. And here we simply type in the 0.4545 and choose our color, which will be in the recent colors. And there we've gamma corrected our blue successfully. I'll just quickly go through and do the other two. So we've told Maya that our textures are sRGB and we've gamma corrected our colors to be linear. Everything is set up, so when we render, everything should look correct. And this is what we get, nice lighting and correct colors and textures. If we compare it to the previous frame, you'll notice that the green doesn't change between them. And that's because it's solid green, it has a value of 1.0. And if we have a look at our sRGB color space comparison chart, we know that a value of one in sRGB is also a value of one in linear. For that reason, the green is correct in both. However, these colors here don't have values of one. If we go into our hypershade, go to the blue, check the color, the red is 0.39, green is 0.8, and the blue is one. And that's why we need to gamma correct the blue and the purple, but not the green. Now, if we were happy with this image and we wanted to render it out linearly so we could composite this and make adjustments in a compositing application in linear space, what we'd wanna do is come up to the render settings set our default output profile to linear and under the quality we need to make this a 32-bit image because linear images need to be 32 bits however if we were happy with this image didn't need to do any compositing and just wanted to output 8-bit jpegs or tiffs what we do is set this back to rgba 8-bit and under the common tab render out srgb so that they'll look correct on our monitor Let's quickly take a look at some other examples of where this sRGB gamma curve can cause us problems inside of Maya, and where working linearly can fix this problem. 
in this scene I have a green ball flying through a red box and uh, we're going to have motion blur turned on so let's just go into the render settings and this is working in sRGB and let's take a render and we can see that this ball has a very dark halo around it that's caused by the transparent parts being around 50% intensity but they're actually very very dark so we get this very dark halo around it but when we enable color management and we don't actually need to add gamma correct nodes to these because they are 100% intensity red and green we can see that this dark halo is absolutely nowhere to be found checkmate sRGB now for another example I've just duplicated the ball and uh, put one a lot closer to the camera and what I've done is in the hypershade I've gone and attached a bokeh lens shader to the perspective view and I've set the uh, the the plane to where this ball is so this will be completely in focus and the set the radius to 2 samples to 16 and I've also turned off final gather so that our renders happen a lot quicker so let's go ahead and render the sRGB version this is what we get some very dark halos where 0.5 intensity meets 0.5 intensity and only end up being around 40% intensity whereas they should be a lot brighter than that so let's go into the render settings, enable our color management and linear workflow to the rescue. And as expected, we no longer have our dark halos of doom and terror. We have very nice looking results. Checkmate sRGB gamma correction. In this example scene, I have a chrome ball reflecting a checkered surface. If we go to the chrome material, we know that we need to gamma correct any diffuse colors that we have but we also need to gamma correct any colored reflections or refractions if we have any. So don't have a colored refractions, we won't worry about that. We do have a colored reflection, so we'll need to gamma correct that. But before we do, let's just take a quick test render and note we are working linearly. This is what we get. It may not look incorrect, but it is technically. So let's save that image. And now I'm just gonna attach a gamma correct node to the reflection color. Okay, that's done, so let's take a re-render. And we can see that now we have correct reflections before we were getting unnaturally strong reflections. So it is sometimes hard to tell between what's correct and what's incorrect, and ultimately it's what looks best that is correct. But it is nice to be technically correct because that's how the light behaves in, in real life. Now let's uh, talk about exporting this. I'm in the render settings, go into the passes, I've just uh, added all the passes we need to composite this and we also need to change the default output profile to linear and we need to use an open EXR we could use an open EXR or an HDR but I'm using EXR and we need to change the frame buffer to float and now we're good to render but just for fun let's actually take a, a render and see what it looks like in the render view and we can see it looks unnaturally dark and that's because we're viewing a linear image on an sRGB monitor and that's why it looks like that. The image is correct, however it just appears incorrect, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to be batch rendering this to an EXR and uh, in After Effects we'll talk about how to composite this. In After Effects we can see that the image is just as dark as in our Maya render view. If we right click on the image and interpret footage main and go to the color management we can see that interpret as linear light is on for 32 bits per channel and this is at 32 bits per channel so After Effects knows that this is a linear image now one thing to note is sometimes when you're working linearly you might import a 32 bit image that isn't linear so that will have to be set to off for those particular images however this is a linear image so let's go ahead and change the depth to 32 bits per channel and work in sRGB 2.1 and linearize workspace and immediately we notice that the image is correct it appears correct now so we can do all our compositing in linear color space we can use the extractor to extract all our different channels and once we're finished compositing in linear space uh, we output the image as an 8-bit sRGB image such as a QuickTime or a JPEG sequence or whatever you want 
and there's actually a tutorial on AE Touch that covers many of the benefits of compositing in linear space inside of After Effects, so check that out. We know that we need to gamma correct anything responsible for our color, such as our colored diffuse, colored reflections, or colored refractions if we have any. But something that we don't need to gamma correct is displacement maps. Displacement maps don't contain any color information, simply the data to determine how high or low the displacement should be. And for that reason, we don't gamma correct our displacement maps. And the same goes for bump, normal, transparency, and specular maps. Normal maps do have color, However, we don't end up seeing any of this color in the final render, so for that reason we don't need to gamma correct it. So that's it for this tutorial, I hope everyone works linearly inside of Maya and begins reaping the benefits.